Understanding how Wi-Fi actually works is necessary to know the loopholes and weak points which we can exploit later to hack a Wi-Fi network. Now you might be thinking, you already know how a Wi-Fi network works. You have your device and you have your router and you connect to the router by entering a password. So here's the kicker. You never actually connect to the router and you never actually send the password to the router for authentication. So if you're not connected to the router, what are you connecting to? And if you're not sending the password for authentication, how are you authenticating? You are connecting to a device called an access point. You might be thinking, I don't have an access point in my home. I just have a router and I'm pretty sure I've never bought an access point. So the thing is, your router can function as an access point and an access point cannot function as a router, all right? So whenever you're connecting to your router, it is broadcasting its name to your phone by functioning as an access point. Now, if your router did not have that functionality, you would have to buy an access point that would connect to the router via some means, and that's how it would work. But technically, you connect to an access point, the access point connects to the router, and the router connects to the internet. So what's happening is, you are getting internet connection on your phone through the access point, which connects to the router, and the router connects to the internet. Now, if you're connecting to the access point, what is an access point and if you are not sending the password to the access point or any device how are you authenticate let's look at the first things first access points so what is an access point now, access point is basically just a device that connects a wireless device to a wired network and your router is part of the internet if it is connected to the internet so your phone connects to the internet via the access point and there can be multiple devices connected to an access point like a laptop or a tablet another phone now all these devices can be connected to the same access point now if multiple devices are connected to the same access point they can communicate to each other via the access point now wi-fi is nothing it's just a communications protocol that define how these all devices like d1 d2 and d3 connect to each other wirelessly so wi-fi is just a protocol that defines how all these things are connected wirelessly now this is a wi-fi network because all these devices are connected to each other wirelessly now when we are hacking the wi-fi network now this is the part that we are concerned about as you can see our device is connected to the access point now if we can connect to the access point via some means unknown to the access point or if we become an unwanted entity like i don't know how to draw an unwanted Unwanted entity. So if we are an unwanted entity and we connect to the access point, that means that we can access all these devices. This is what we are trying to do. But as we mentioned earlier, we do not send the password to authenticate. So how do we do that? And if the password is never sent to the access point, how do we recognize or how do we find out the password? Let's see how we can do that. But before moving on to the hacking process, let's familiarize ourselves with some terminologies that is necessary before we begin hacking. So how does an access point function? First, it broadcasts its name. So whenever you see a Wi-Fi name that is being broadcasted by an access point. The Wi-Fi name is also called the SSID. I'll call it neighbor Wi-Fi. Let's just call it N Wi-Fi. So this is the first thing. The access point broadcasts the Wi-Fi name that is called an SSID. An access point has something called a BSSID, which is basically a MAC address. And what is a MAC address? MAC address is a number that uniquely identifies all the devices connected to your network. In fact, all the devices in the internet have a unique MAC address. A MAC address looks something like this. It is actually just 12 digit hexadecimal number. This is what a MAC address looks like and it is unique for each device in the internet. Now the third thing that is of concern to us is it authenticates all the devices connected to the Wi-Fi network. Now it is not sending the password. We are not sending the password to authenticate but we are using something called a four-way handshake. This is the keyword here. What four-way handshake means is you have an access point and you have a device. You are not sending password but what you are exchanging is you are exchanging packets and these packets are exchanged for Four times to authenticate a device in a Wi-Fi network. So what are packets? In fact, whatever you see, the video that you are seeing right now are not being downloaded as videos, but they are being sent to your device as a stream of packets and your browser or wherever you are viewing this is organizing them and showing it to you as a video. Whenever there is two and four of data in the internet, they are being sent as packets. You can think of packets as nothing but a sequence number that is one, two, three, four, five, the number of packets in the stream, that is all it is, and source address and a destination address. And of course, the data payload. Of course, there are more interfaces involved, but for the sake of this tutorial, uh, what you need to know is packet contains source address, destination address, and data. Those packets are sent to and for four times to create a handshake that authenticates a device in the Wi-Fi network. Now let's move ahead to the actual hacking process. 
First of all, we need to identify the Wi-Fi network that we are going to hack. It's pretty simple. So you just see the Wi-Fi networks that are available and you just pick which one to hack. Once you have done that, we need to deauthenticate a device that is already connected to the network. Now, this is not entirely necessary. Why we are doing this is we know that there is four-way packets to and fro, right? This only happens when a device is trying to connect. Once the device is already authenticated, there is no four-way handshake going on. So by deauthenticating a device, what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the device disconnected from the Wi-Fi network so that when it tries to connect again, we will capture all those packets. And third is capture four-way handshake packets. Once we have captured the four-way handshake packets, as we told earlier, the password is not sent to and fro between the access point and the device. So what is inside this four-way handshake packets that we can use to get the password? In the data payload of the packets, there is something called the MIC. MIC is Message Integrity Code. Now this MIC is created using the SSID, which is the Wi-Fi name, the MAC address of devices involved, and the PSK, which is Free Shared Key, and this can be considered the password. There are a lot of other things, intermediate things that are created like PTK and PMK and all that stuff. But basically, they are usually all derived from this and this is what we can use to find out the password. So we already have the SSID, that is the Wi-Fi name, the MAC address, which can be gotten easily. The only thing missing is PSK. So what we do is we use something called Aircrack to generate a bunch of MICs and if this MIC matches the MIC that we have gotten from the packet, we can be sure that the password that is used to generate this MIC is the actual password. Now Aircrack can test with almost up to 1 million passwords per second and instead of of randomly generating the password, we use something called a word list. Now, word lists are actually real passwords that have been hacked or that have been exposed previously, and all those passwords are added in this list. And we test with all the passwords in this list against the actual MIC. And if the MIC is generated from that random password, MAC and SSID matches the actual MIC that was captured from the handshake packet, that means our password is the actual password. Now, Kali Linux actually provides a list called RawQ that actually has 32 million real passwords. First, you can test using this. If not, there are other word lists available through the internet that has up to 320 million real passwords. Now, we might think they are unique, but most of us, or at least some of us, are using common passwords. And if this does not work, then we can then we can do brute force attacks, and that will take a lot of time. For most scenarios, if the password is not very difficult, these word lists should do fine. Now, for 32 million passwords, if you go through all of these, it will take just 32 seconds. If you have to go through a bigger word list, it will take 10 minutes, 20 minutes or hours depending on the word list size and your processing power. So this is how actually the Wi-Fi hacking process works. First, you identify the network, you authenticate the device so it tries to authenticate again, capture the four-way handshake packets, get the MIC from the packets and you use Aircrack to generate other MICs using the actual SSID, MAC and password from the word list. And once the MIC matches the MIC that you got from the packet, we know that we have got the password and we have hacked Wi-Fi network. In the next video, I will actually do this on my neighbor's Wi-Fi network and subscribe and hit that notification icon to stay tuned. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below.